Well, lots of different consumer gadgets from uh, wearable technology to uh, driverless cars to drones. Uh, but really what's uh, front and center of, of all of that is 5G technology because essentially this is next generation mobile networks that are going to power a lot of this technology. Uh, and now, of course, it's a topic that's become heavily politicized as well of late because of how crucial it is to many of these emerging technologies. Right now, you've got the battle going on between the US and China, both countries trying to push ahead head with the rollout of this technology. Uh, China rec recently issuing licenses to its uh, carriers there. U.S. carriers also starting to, to build out their 5G networks. President Trump recently said that 5G is a race that America must win. Now, on the back of all of that, in that context, I had a chance to catch up with Gary Shapiro. He's the CEO of the Consumer Technology Association, the organization that actually runs CES. He's also an advisor to the U.S. government. And I had a chance to ask him a little bit about whether the approach from the U.S. is the right one towards 5G. Let's listen into what he had to say. There is great interest in us being ahead. We certainly have the chip companies here that are well poised to do it. We have uh, great handset companies like Apple, and we have a hunger for better, quicker, faster broadband. So anything to increase competition, I think, is a good thing to get it here. It does require some infrastructure investment. It requires people being comfortable with these little dishes around their neighborhoods because it uses a lot of them. It's very dish intensive, but it also uses different spectrums depending on the environment. So 5G has a great future. It is the future. And in terms of how countries execute to get there is really up to each country. Now, experts expect 5G to enable trillions of dollars of economic value over the next few years, and that's because of the new industries it may support. One of those is the drone industry, and I had a chance to catch up with Larry Liu, the CEO of Unique, a Chinese drone company, and ask what kind of experiences 5G might unlock for drones. Let's listen in to what he had to say. Right now, you know, it's a very important thing for drones to do the image transmission during the, during the operation, right? So we have a very long range technology to provide that technology. But in future, you can simply using 5G. Uh, it's, it's, like it's good enough to deliver the content to a very, uh, you know, very, you know, very far place. Now, there's a lot of hype around this technology, and I just want to temper some of those expectations as well. There's still a lot of investment required to roll out 5G across nations all over the world, of course. Um, rollouts will take some time to complete because you've got to build up new infrastructure. And there's always the question of whether consumers will bite and be ready to pay for 5G. And against all of that in the background, you've got this huge political battle between the U.S. and China going on with questions over whether that might affect the future of this technology. Hadley, back to you. Arjun, I have a quick question on that because we are talking about 5G. There's absolutely no way I imagine you could be at a tech conference in China without talking about Huawei. What's the buzz there? Well, Xiao Yang, uh, the chief strategy officer of uh, Huawei's consumer business, was speaking earlier. He was laying out uh, the company's plans when it comes to AI technology and its consumer business. Wasn't taking any questions, however, at this conference, of course. Um, but look, let me just give you a bit of context here. Huawei, of course, on that U.S. blacklist, it's being faced, uh, being cut off from some of those key technologies like the software it requires from Google and some of those key semiconductors it requires from U.S. firms as well. So it's focusing on developing its own chips, focusing on developing its own operating system as well. And experts are suggesting that this tactic from the US to cut Huawei off from US supplies could actually boost China's own homegrown tech industry. And that's actually a view that's mirrored by Gary Shapiro of the CTA. Let's listen in to what he had to say on that point. Our concern really is that th this, this is escalating out of control. When, you know, when elephants fight, the ground gets trampled. And here we have uh, technology important to the world. China has a lot of it, the US has it, Europe has it. And the history of technology is free trade, people working together, uh, the com law of comparative advantage where you do what you do best. We have these great American chip companies ready to sell to all around the world. And the fact is I think the US policy may be really pushing China to do everything by itself and not only put up walls around China, but we're putting up an economic fence around the United States. Semiconductors, chips, those are a huge focus for China right now. They're part of this Made in China 2025 uh, plan. And the aim for China is essentially to have 70% of the chips it consumes 
produced in China. That number is way lower, currently under 20% right now, and that's because they're really relying very heavily on U.S. technology, and they want to change that uh, very, very quickly. Uh, the government recently announced some tax breaks for semiconductor firms, and what you've seen now is companies like Huawei and other tech giants here begin to focus on the semiconductor space. Experts I spoke to uh, very recently said that actually if China develops its own semiconductor industry, if they begin to take themselves off U.S. reliance, that could really hurt the U.S. in the long term. Guys, back to you. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.